show you is the Assembler CTF. So we're done with this uh, Windows virtual machine for now. Uh, the assembly code, just because I, I wrote it a while ago, I didn't write it on Windows. We could have, and that would be more consistent with the rest of this course to do it on Windows. But assembly code uh, runs regardless, doesn't even know what operating system it's running on. So it's on Linux. So if you want to do this, you have to have a Linux machine. And if you haven't taken my other courses, here's a project where you just download and install a Linux virtual machine. Or you can use a um, Google Cloud server or anything like that. So I'm using a local uh, Debian machine made according to that project. And I've connected to it with SSH, which is the way I like to do it, because then it's easy to copy and paste into. So what I've got here is a Debian machine if I do um, Anyway, that's, that's what it is. So uh, there's an assembler CTF you can do here. A couple students have done it. You can just get a scoreboard here and just tell us what name you have there so we can give you your points. And if you want to learn assembly, which you don't really have to know very much of to do basic um, malware analysis, but it's nice to learn, then you can go here and install some tools in your machine, and then you can write assembler. So hello.asm is the first one. I've already put it here. All right, so this is assembly language code, and there's really not much to it. Here's the text section. That should look pretty familiar. And here's the data section. So the text section just contains a few commands, and the data section just contains hello world. And then it has a mark here. The length is going to equal the current location minus the pointer to the message. So it's going to calculate the length of this and store it in a integer down here, which is pretty nice. Yeah, well. Yep. It, it, that's why, you know, assembly is pretty tough. And so, you know, you don't have to do it. It's extra credit. But if you do want to practice learning assembly, then it's a start. So now what these do is they make system calls. System calls are how you get things done in Windows. So, and you find syscalls work right here. Um, these are system calls. There's just a, these are the equivalent. Uh, all right. And so this is how it works on Linux, which is what we're doing here. So I guess I shouldn't say the mal the assembly doesn't know you're running Linux instead of Windows. But anyway, um, so you can do a read and a write with these system calls. And I'm doing a write. So you put a 4 in EAX, and that is what goes here, 4 into EAX. And then into EBX, you put an integer, which is the length of what you're writing. And into ECX, you put um, a pointer to the characters you're printing. So here I put um, the length into, oh, excuse me, I guess I got it wrong. EDX is the length. And I don't right know what EBX is. Looks like a one works. Oh, one is probably, that's probably, that's the device number. In Linux, device one is the console, and I think device zero is you typing in. So that's what's going on. You, EAX, is number four, which tells you what call, what system call you're making. This is the length of the string. This is the pointer to the start of the string. And this is one if you want to print to the console. And it would be another number if you want to print to a file or something. So you just load those variables here with the move command. And then you call int 80, which is what makes a system call. And then you exit. The second one here is just exit, which is one. You don't, and so a one is sys exit. And you could exit with a parameter, which is the number you were to exit with, but you don't need to. Movie X1 and int 80 will end. So this is just exit, and this is just print to the screen. And uh, as you can see, it takes several lines of assembly to be one command in a language like C, and that's how it looks. And you compile that stuff with. Um, and there's an online tutorial if you want to learn more. A programming tutorial and some questions understanding of the theory in the tutorial, which is good stuff if you want to do that. And you can just go down to the hand, the heads on hands on stuff here. And so, for example, you can write a head routine. What you do here is you make um, some uh, HTTP requests and run them up. So here I can make hello world and uh, the commands to uh, I'll say yes, I removed some unnecessary white space in there. The commands to compile it are up here. NASM compiles it down to object code and then load turns it into assembly code, turns it into executable code. It's two steps, not one step. 
So that makes the object code, and this loads the object code uh, in ELF 386 code, and now you can run it with dot slash hello. So it prints hello world, and I didn't even put a carriage return line feed at the end like I could have. This is just a very simple hello world program. And now, um, all you have to do is modify that. Here you have to make head HTTP 1.1 and uh, host and then an empty line. That's the request. And one thing, by the way, that is annoying here is if you look at the original one here, um, that one. Anyway, the thing, uh, you kind of have to add the carriage. Let's fix them. Let's put the carriage in line feed in this one because that's one thing that I found a little more difficult than it should have been. So if I go here, it's carriage return line feed. And for some reason, when you're doing um, HTTP requests, the order matters, which I felt kind of ripped off about. So I can do this, hello world, comma, 13, 10. 13 is D, 10 is A. I think that's carriage return line feed in that order. So this should fix it. And you can either put in quotes and ASCII text, or you can put commas and then the integer value of the character in ASCII. So 13 and 10 should be carriage return line feed. So if I compile it now with NASM load and then run it, now it has the carriage return line feed. So you could do this one here by just a minor variation of that where you have to print two lines of stuff, really three lines of stuff, head and then carriage return line feed, then host, carriage return line feed, and then carriage return line feed alone. And you could do that with one syscall with a long line of text that just includes carriage return line feeds in it, or you could do it with three syscalls. Either way would work. And when you get it right, you can send it to my server, and it will be interpreted as a valid request and give you a reply. And they all work like that. You're making things here. So anyway, um, yep, it's not too easy. But anyway, and most people find assembly pretty baffling, so, you know, I think only a few students will want to do this. But um, check it out. When you're ready to learn assembly, this might help. Um, there's an assembly course at City College that teaches you MIPS assembly, and people tell me it's really quite good, and it would help prepare you for this. And, of course, a lot of people just don't ever go there. You can get a lot done without really knowing assembly very much. But, you know, in case you'd like to learn assembly, it is a skill. You could begin to practice here. And that's all I wanted to say about it.